okay in our next video we're going to start uh, preparing our um, scene for our <clears throat> bus crash so let's start by saving a new scene bus crash okay um, I'm gonna move this render nose down because that's where the, um, the bus crash will leave okay um, <clears throat> since our environment slightly changed as opposed to what I have been waiting on my uh, end we're gonna need to find a new location for this bus for this for the the front ship to slice through okay um, which means we need to find something that works so I'm gonna turn on where is my terrain is here okay so I guess um, maybe somewhere I don't know I know I would like it to be quite dynamic so maybe um, we can have a camera I never like <clears throat> I never like the part that the, the camera turns from this part anyway so I guess uh, we can have in at least in this scenario we can have the heat happening here which means after the turn here is where I can probably place the bus okay so let's arrange it then um, let's create a geometry node let's call it bus anim bus animation okay um, I believe we have our bass in the um, cars or the traffic where was our node in the, in the cars I think I believe it's there so let's uh, create an object merge here lock it in into this I believe it's one of these metro bus yes so uh, this is the bus which is I think it's this one let's have a look I think this one had some more detail no it's not this one it's this one yes because yeah, I remember modeling something like very simple but like an interior detail okay so that should do let's bring this guy here and we're gonna animate it in a way that our front car will pass through <clears throat> now we need to change not into this but none so we can use the it's uh, transform to place it okay so our location is somehow here somewhat here which means that we need to scale this up it's a bit too small I guess that's fine maybe three since that's a big spaceship okay and um, if I press enter I get my gizmo so I would say this bus was going from there to there and then it crashed so <clears throat> let's have a look I guess uh, yeah this is what we can do probably so I'm gonna animate it now let's say let's put a key here keyframe set keyframe keyframe and then I guess which we're gonna swap obviously to a different uh, to a simulation so it's not gonna be continuing like this we're gonna swap it at a certain frame but I'm just trying to make sure that this actually go through so I guess um, it's because channels I can open my <clears throat> keys out oh, there on the other side and maybe select everything yeah kind of switch those to linear and I think we are missing roughly so maybe if I go to this key here 
bring this a bit forward to make sure that I am not there. Here, I can put this on auto. So, okay, so it's roughly in the center. Uh, the height is not correct, so let's correct that as well. Where are you? I lost them, okay, there. Okay, so, which means this is too high. And it's also too high. Where are you? Here. It starts with minus 20, no, where is it? Minus 29, and in white, I want to finish in minus 29 also. So it kind of passes through, I believe. Let's have a look, flight cam. No, it's still a bow. Further down. Maybe it's going down, so we can, I think that, that okay, we can actually use these keys to adjust it. So that's gonna be translate Y, okay. So at this frame, I really want to be down. So while I'm looking at my keys, I can drag it down. Okay, so now it's going straight in the middle. Okay, cool. Um, which means that our simulation will take over around this frame and then it will be just simulation of pieces of ship breaking through. Okay, so how does that work? So first we need to prepare our ship for breaking, right? And that's a big network. Let me show you this part, it takes some time. Um, <clears throat> which to be honest, I really want to finish recording. Uh, okay. Um, let's create another geometry node and let's call it geometry prep or uh, we can call it solid sim solid sim let's dive inside okay um, so I want to bring in two things right I want to bring in um, I mean I want to bring in my ship for collision and everything and then I want to bring my bus object to destroy it. so again we're going to start with an object merge um, we are going to bring in the object merge we put in here with the baked in world space okay and this is my animation so I can go like this to make sure that it's moving as it should okay cool um, and then I'm going to put a time shift here because from this branch so this is gonna be in animation so I'm gonna do my all preparation here let's say when is the first frame it moves 270 280 okay so I'm gonna lock my time shift to 280 okay let's plug it in here and then this is all packed object so I'm gonna unpack it oh go back inside okay and then <clears throat> I'm gonna blast the glass I believe I had it, yes. So I have a glass, a different glass. Okay. And then what I want is a, a nice um, shell. And this geometry may not be very healthy. So what I need to do is to create, a, because the solid solver kind of works with tetrahedrals, right? So we need like a nice clean shell for this to work. So for this to work, again, I can do this in a scatter. So a lot of times I get asked, why am I doing this with the solid solver? It's very slow, etc. It's because there are um, hundreds of 
bullet tutorials out there and um, and they work they work although there's one thing that is really cool I believe with the solid solver is that it actually produces a quite nice result and um, that's why sometimes I prefer to choose it and preparation time is shorter so sometimes it outputs actually really nice results with less amount of preparation time and that's why I prefer sometimes again to use a solid server and that occasionally uh, if the mesh you receive is not very very uh, destruction friendly then this kind of method just works out of the box uh, okay so now I'm gonna create a VDB from particles I'm going to change its voxel size to 0.5 and I'm going to copy voxel size to point with the scale and I'm go I don't need the uh, I don't have a minimum radius it's all uniform so this is going to kind of create me a, a, a shape like this and then I'm going to erode it so what I'm trying to achieve now is why I'm going to have more than one uh, volume is that if I turn on this layer here and then oh, sorry this is my mesh right and then this is my shell so I need to create something that is close to the shell as possible so right now I think I'll say that it's a bit too fat especially inside here so I can then put in a VDB reshape SDF and maybe do a little bit erosion and that's too much so let's go down okay so kind of producing some interesting results now so I'm gonna try 35 okay I think we can go 45 no sorry 25 no we need to go up 45 is okay I think it almost is in certain areas it has less more detail because it's not even I think in that case we can probably produce something a bit more accurate um, by changing our VDB size maybe if we go four and let's look here now it's kind of giving holes now points are getting bigger um, maybe let's go five again Maybe we need more points. Let's go four zero. Okay, let me check this again. It's kind of, no, it's not working at the moment. We need something bigger. Okay. That's better. Um, actually, I think I have an idea that it's gonna work better um, because I should have because my polygons don't get aligned you see uh, and that's because we are not in the uh, properly uh, aligned world center so I would say go back to the original source and before we pack it let's create a rest position okay so we can create a rest position here no rest position okay so then if I go back into my solid sim preparation after my unpack I can attribute wrangle because I'm roughly aligned here right so what I can do is that I can say at p equals at rest and that's gonna take me back to my rest position and now if I do everything right I should have a fairly better aligned geometry obviously the size changed I guess the, the we have a new size now because we scaled it up here four times that's fine we can do that after the scale after the attribute wrangle so let's uh, move this up let's move this up I say back to rest and then I can <clears throat> scale it here four times from the road center 
because I, that's I want to simulate at the scale so probably I want to get my um, VDB sorted at the scale okay so now at least all my almost all my um, geometry is kind of aligned which probably would really uh, output a better result okay just try to get a bit more accuracy here although more the accurate slower the sims are um i guess maybe let me try four okay i'm gonna stick to this value i think it's reasonably well that should work let's maybe have a look if we go out anywhere as well no i think i think we're good i think we're covered quite well okay and i will have to play anyway based on how much uh geometry uh, um, how many tetrahedrals we're going to generate so now i have the polygon so the next node i want to uh, play is now solid conform so i'm going to put a solid conform node here to uh start generating our tetrahedrals and I'm gonna get get my max stat scale to one and let's hook it up to see what the number will be. Just have to wait for a cook. Okay, it's taking a while. Maybe maybe we should start with low res to begin with, to be fair. Because this looks like it's gonna be a little bit too much. Okay, waiting for the final tetrahedralization to finish. And. Okay, so that's that's a lot. We don't want that that's way too much so you want something around a hundred thousand although i think that would produce quite nice result with really nice bending snapping um physical settings but i am actually going to put a note here that these settings create um that usually comes from the uh, the size of the vdb so point four generates 700k that's so let's go to 0.5 i guess even more actually i'm gonna try one and see where does it take me and then we can play with the settings after yeah that was quite fast that gave me 82,000 TED. So let's start with this and see how the performance is. And based on that, we're gonna, we can go more um, um, accurate. So right now, no, not, not, nobody knows how to, the Houdini doesn't know how to fracture this. So we're gonna use solid fracture, but we're gonna change a few settings in solid fracture. So if I press the, the display, it's gonna give me, um, a very squarish um, shapes but I want to break that so I don't, I don't want this level of square shapes uh, so I'm going to right click allow editing I'm gonna dive inside and um, I believe it's where we are dealing with this is this I changed a few attributes I think in I don't remember I believe in the attribute fracture part yes this is the part and um i want to randomize the uh, jitter and offset so i'm actually going to change delete these okay it already kind of changed the shape And then probably gonna enter like um, 0.25 here, maybe, I don't know, random numbers, five, whatever. Okay, so it's already like uh, not square. We're gonna stick to that. Okay, let's go up at the main level. 
Okay, so um, one thing I noticed with the, uh, <clears throat> something that you might want to uh, be prepared in advance is that fracturing does generate a new geometry and it might in the future cause problem with the uh, uh, offsetting. So at this stage, before I actually start simulating, I create an ID called IDP, ID primitive, whatever, at PT now. So I gotta I kind of create my own fake ID attribute. Okay, so let's say uh, pre sim IDs, pre sim IDs. Okay, um, and now I have my um, VDB ready for simulation, but we are not in the right place. So then, what I want to do next is now to move this object. So this guy, I have this guy here, right? This is right here that can move around in the correct place. So that's that. That's where my uh, ship is, but my fractured position is here. It's not even the correct size. So now I'm gonna go back. Oh, no, this was the correct size actually. So um, I want to put an unpack again under the animation now which is where my object is and then um, <clears throat> I wonder if this would work I can do a point deform to it but it's ne they have never been in the same place hmm. this I will have to test because the point deform is not gonna work right we can give it a try I don't think it will but um, because that is the rest position that is the correct size and how do I <clears throat> okay uh, we can okay I'm going to, to disable this to generate this in the its original place that was actually quite fast and I don't need to transform it's already four times bigger okay let's try this first because um, I need to get the uh, transform to be working for this to work properly but okay I'm gonna put a time blend here in case I need sub sub steps in my sim so my point deform will work better uh, so you can like it can interpolate so we'll put a point deform here this is my deformed lattice it's not packed it's just the points this is my rest um, this is where I'm gonna need to so like here is my rest unpack un unmoving uh, part and then here is my um, <coughs> deformed mesh Mm, shouldn't have cooked why is it cooking this should be time independent here is time independent. yes so now if I uh, look here my tetrahedralized uh, version of my mesh is kind of uh, uh, moving together with I think there's a UI issue here hide other yeah it's it's being deformed with the animation of the uh, animation of the <clears throat> ship, right? It, it, it itself. Uh, so now what I need is I'm going to create a new attribute wrangle here, and I'm going to call the position of the current position as target P. So that's the target position, pretty much. And I'm gonna put an out here. I'm gonna say out FEM bus driver. I tried to copy that for the other scene. <clears throat> Not to type it. Okay. And then I'm gonna bring this guy here. And I'm gonna say this is out FEM bus. And now what I want is that I want to copy these. Uh, actually, I don't need to because now we, we're gonna fetch this inside straight into .NET. So the other thing that 
what we want to make sure is that our bus to have enough geometry to break so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to put here and null so let's maybe move this guy here because I'm going to need that space um, we're going to can name it to in bus in bus geo now I want to put a divide swap to give some detail to this mesh so actually we can break it like because FEM will try to cut it and it will only cut if it has enough geometry it's going to cut wherever it has geometry from so that's going to be necessary to I'm trying to stop the other scene um, we can I guess put a breaker okay we're gonna start low res but that's fine uh, avoid small holes I guess creates a bit more random shapes okay um, I guess we're gonna need something like I don't know, 25 25 to 25 to have something convincing it's gonna generate a lot of geo but it's fine waiting for it the divide to finish its job okay I'm going to copy that uh, pre-seam ID under this guy as well it might come useful and uh, so this is going to be our embedded geo pretty much okay so let's put an L here so we're gonna simulate this, and then Houdini will use these to cut this. Uh, and this is gonna be in embedded geo. Okay, um, so this is bus preparation. Okay, so now we need to create our dot network. Let's maybe change the color here because they are both outputs that as well. Let's put on a dot net. Let's call it bus crash dots. Let's dive inside. <clears throat> so we're gonna create a output. Oh, which we have it sorry uh, a finite element solver a fam solver gravity um no, that's not the correct connection and we're gonna need a fam solid object that goes here and that's uh, pretty much for now. We're gonna need a few more nodes. We're gonna need a, um, a merge so we can bring in our ship as a collider, a static solver. Actually, we can use that one for uh, in here. We need to bring in our ship, right? Let's bring in our flying guy. That's our ship A. So let's bring in ship A, no, ship B. All right, where is it? This guy is ship B. Okay, which is this, that's fine. So let's sim in here, this is in here. Okay, it's gonna be important for us to create something uh, reasonable as a collider. Uh, where is our frame here, right? So our simulation is supposed to start at 282. So let's select this guy, change it to start frame 282. <clears throat> and I'm gonna do something very similar to this guy, like uh, in ship A. It's important to have good collision geometry, so why not do the same thing? Let's scatter some points. I don't think we from 
uh, polygons will just work out of the box, but it's worth a shot. <coughs> Maybe that's a bit too much. Maybe in order to check that it's actually good, VDB convert, we can put a VDB convert to see the geometric outputs to see if it's reasonably well quality. Okay, maybe this will work. So we don't need to change it. Okay, I think we can go a little bit more inflated for this, number three. So we need to put a time shift because we're gonna do a, otherwise it's gonna deform every frame and we don't want to do that. So like if I go here, it's actually, it, as good as it looks, it's not good because it should be changing topology every frame and that's not what we need. If we look at the uh, the uh, bullet or fam or flip, they don't necessarily like that. So if I switch between frames, maybe no. Sorry, let's do that. Refresh automatically. Pin. See the numbers are changing, so that's not good. So how do we avoid that? Again, like we can do. Uh, what did we say? Two hundred eighty-two, right? So I can lock it in here to frame two hundred eighty-two. And then I can just put a point deform. Mesh to deform is my new geo. Rest point is the frozen one. And then the, the right input is the, uh, the animate geo. And that's not gonna produce any uh, hiccups. It's gonna be easier to work with. So let's put it now here and say uh, ship collision. Okay. And let's go back in to here. Solid object, this will be our boss. Um, we are going to bring the boss geo into this initial state, which is our fam. So that should kind of bring in our bus. That's fine. So if I press play now, I think it's just gonna go down based on gravity. Okay. And first we're gonna change all the settings to the speedy uh, uh, versions uh, as fast as possible. Uh, I think this is, they changed the settings. We used to have more options enable collision enable fracturing so we don't need this at the moment we're going to change the simulation quite static no that's fine that's fine okay i think in here we have some other options we allows us to speed up the sim so we can do allow editing go inside maybe change it to uh, 32 okay and then if i press play again it's falling down okay Okay, and then, okay, um, and then we have our driver, which we can define here, target deformation. I'm going to hook it up here, and I'm going to say, this is my deformer. And I want them to be, I want this to be like um, something really high, and then, uh, animated to be something really less. So when do I, I, I pin it here, right? I should have pinned it like that. And so I'm going to put this on, no, I need to see my bus first. So here it is. And maybe this guy, okay. So I want this to be always super high, like a hundred thousand or a million. And in this frame, okay, I want this value here is actually when it hits, I want the same. And then I want it to gradually lose speed or something. So here is finally zero. Okay, so let me see here. Okay, um, so let's go back inside the bus crash. Uh, static geo, static object, solver, static solver. Okay, left effects, right. 
it's a collab relationship this is our ship cool um, no bounciness whatsoever I'm going to pin it and then bring in our ship collider geo to soft path and that should do the trick I believe if we press play let's see what happens oh it's moving that's fine that's good but our ship is not moving and there's a good reason for it it's because we didn't change our deformer to uh not deforming oh, i think our collider settings are not working was it do we need a volume collision i actually don't remember um is it a surface collider we can try <clears throat> if, if when in doubt use the shelf tools that's what i'm gonna do now make sure your simulation is selected as bus crash and what i'm gonna do is yeah it's just gonna edit anyway we can go to the fem and then select there should be a or it just decide surface collider Create a static object from soft geometry pre conference interaction with cloud. Okay, let's try this one. And then it's gonna say us to select it. I'm gonna select, hit enter. I guess it's gonna do its thing. Let's go inside the dotnet to see if it did. It did something. Solid sim. Did it change use volume collisions? Which one is ours? Oh, this. this one is ours. This one is his use surface collisions. This was okay. Maybe that's what it needs. So I'm gonna disable it and then try it again. 282, right? Okay. Auto update. Press play. Still not colliding. Or is it? So it should be pushing it away, but it's not really pushing it away, is it? Okay, I'm just gonna wait a few frames. Okay, let's roll back. Maybe before anything, we can test um i'm gonna remove the target deformation so now it should just fall down right yes uh maybe let's go if two frames forward no actually i'm just gonna move this in front So in this frame, I know that it's gonna hit, so I can do my test. Later on, I can just disable it to see what it does. Okay. And I'm going to plug this in here. So this is the starting frame. Cool. So, because I'm trying to understand if the collisions are working or not at the moment. And so far, it looks like it's not. There's not any bulging whatsoever. I'm going to turn this off and turn this on to see if it's something with my settings. And no, it's not working. Um, maybe something to the right, left, let's go mutual. Oh, my target strength is too high. That's that could be the reason. Left. Let's drop this to zero again. Oh, it's falling, but it's not colliding. Um, why are you not colliding? Let's maybe it's looking for a uh, volume. I don't understand. 
I'm going to uh, check this again, I guess, but this should have worked. Create a static object from the program for interaction with cloth. Yeah, well, that's kind of the same thing. Oh, well, maybe our radius is too small. Okay, we can have a look at that. It's easy. Let's go here. Maybe need something fat. Okay, let me see. That seems fine. Okay, let's make it bigger, I suppose. And um, I'm going to say reevaluate here. And we can possibly, okay, let's press play again. Okay, it's not working. Okay, let me investigate this a little bit and we'll get back right away so we don't waste some valuable recording time. Oh, well, um, I guess uh, I need to have this on. We probably just forget it while we were playing with it. Uh, this sh should hopefully work now and that might have explained why everything was moving so fast as well. Um, okay, I press play. I'm just try to see how fast this goes. It's not going very fast. Mm, this was faster before. Okay, let's wait. Maybe it's taking its time because the first impact is quite fast. Uh, so I'm gonna actually wait until it steps and if you frame and then um, we'll get back and if it's uh, something that is too much we'll have to find some other solution okay it kind of seems to be working it's just a bit too slow but um, I think the amount of bending and tearing we're gonna get from this is gonna look a bit more interesting so I think I'm gonna let it slip well right now obviously it's too uh, soft so um, I'm gonna refer to my settings and my other sim, uh, other scene. So I start with the uh, initialize behavior as cork from the uh, settings. So I'm gonna change the volume stiffness to 100, shape stiffness to 100. I think the rest is kind of same. I'm gonna rekey these. Uh, we can go back to here. Turn that off. So we can get the target deformation from here, which we start with 100, right? And I'm gonna turn off again. But this time I will not forget in a collision, so I can actually uh, see that my source is moving. Okay, let's just keep it here. And frame one. I turned off, you shouldn't crash. And then, um, why is not moving now? I need this to move. Okay, maybe remove the this guy so we can see that it's more moving. I don't have any collision. What are you calculating at the moment? Oh, maybe it's because I didn't change it to the input. Okay, let's go back to the starting frame, which was 282, right? Yes, okay, let's go back inside. Um, here, okay, I think what I'm gonna do is to drop the count even lesser so we're gonna go like 1.5 should give me even less tetrahedrals I believe thousand. it's like a cave okay um, let's try this one go inside and press play I think it's the first frame that is taking its toll. After that, it kind of needs to get a bit faster. Or it's just actually getting slower every uh, version. I believe um, the feature 
halls with the uh, vellum and struts so we should probably prepare for those maybe in the next tutorial i will do some of my studies and then we can uh, kind of figure out how it goes okay and here i'm gonna set to zero so if i now go select left input fx right input i don't need this anymore i know that it works i don't need this anymore okay i'm going to save my scene the i changed the settings as well so now what we need to check is the fracturing and some of these substack numbers needs to be a little bit bigger and i'm gonna let this cook for an hour now to see where it goes um but before we continue i think we can write our output file um so from the bus cache we are interested in only the bus so we just need the geo therefore we can actually just fetch out what we need um but we need to create a, another uh, pretty much a dop import node under our because we didn't write oh we didn't edit our embedded g actually let's do that as well so go to your bus turn on your embedded while you're manual because it's a bit of a tedious uh, uh, process and um we are going to create we did already in in embedded geo can go in here okay and um so what we need under here is the output of that right so we want to pull out the embedded geo as well because that's the one that gets cut so we can put an adobe import node the import fields here and out embed and I'm gonna pull another one called out sim. So we need both of these as a result, uh, which means both of them uh, are coming from the same .NET actually. So there's no difference in the here. And both of them, um, dop, sorry, not dop import fields, dop import only. Okay, this is in embed dot network is here an object mask i'm going to copy it so you can use the same so dobs objects created by slash obj slash solid sim and then the name of the dot net here is this okay so this is changing with the name of the dot net and then in here the last part is changing with bus now in here i want to import geometry from dot network and this one I want to be embedded geometry and so I'm going to paste it here okay so that's going to fetch out the embedded geometry from the first frame so the first frame usually gets calculated quite a while so this is going to be the in sim but I am interested also in the simulated geometry as well and that's going to come out from I'm sorry that's gonna come out from right here and I can also put an null here then he, all right under say so let's put another null here null embed out sim out so those are the tets I uh, just want to create two groups before I cache. So here I'm going to say primitives. And this is going to be uh, embed or embedded. Embedded. Em 
embed it, embed. That's fine. And um, just duplicate this guy. Sorry, let's copy paste it again. Okay, just duplicate this group node. And this one is gonna be now sim geo. Okay, so I can cache them together and then I can split them after. Uh, and then I'm gonna put a merge here. So I can put a file cache. Um, let's put a manual. Where was my folders? I could get them from ship A guns, I guess. Here I can get them from. Not here. Here, yes. Copy. Make sure you don't overwrite. So that's gonna be dollar os dollar os bus sim let's call it bus sim and how many frames do i want this to be calculated from 282 until let's say 300 so the 12 frames we go in and out or i don't know 310 okay um i think that should do the trick Wait, uh, wait a second, wait a second. We did put too many sub steps, I believe. Yeah, I think we can go one, because we, we need to try it first to see that if we actually need so many. If we do, we'll switch. If we don't, we don't. Um, I think we didn't, I didn't change the factoring values properly yet on the bus. So on the collisions, I think that collide with connected components. We don't need that at the moment. If something looks like something else is going through something else, we, then we can think about turning that on. Fracture threshold is changed to 15. Go to your attributes and ask for all of those. They might come handy. Um, now I think we can just uh, press play and that should work, but before that, I actually want to see that it's working. So I'm going to uh, press play for two, three frames and then see if it's working. Then I'm going to let it cook, okay? So I just change it to auto and just wait a little bit. Okay, so I let it go for a few frames to see if it's, uh, if it's uh, you know, if it's kind of working. So it looks like it's kind of working. It's not that fast, I would say. It's quite slow, almost uh, four minutes per frame, but um, that's the wrong button. What, what happens to the uh, actual geometry is quite interesting. So you get all the ripping and tearing and um, nice level of the formation, although um, I think that's the thing, right? The, you need to have enough geometry so the cuts are a bit better and they're kind of shallow, but we're gonna extrude them to have some depth as well. Uh, we also have our simulation geometry here, which preserves some extra detail. So obviously this is gonna be a longer sim because we do want to have a bit more detail. Um, and we are a certain, like this part of the uh, geometry still fine, but I think, where was I? We were here, right? So this was our divide. I think we need to still triangulate this geometry with another divide. So so we can kind of get some nicer cuts, I would say. Uh, let's see what happens here. Like I said, it's gonna kind of generate a bit more, at least when it cuts, it's gonna cut from the center and it's gonna be looking a bit more interesting. So I'm gonna cache this out now to see the result. Uh, oh yes, and um, it looked like my bus was breaking too easy. So I changed the enable fraction to 20, uh, the threshold. And at the moment, sub steps is four. I think we can start with one. It's gonna generate more uh, faster results. And then we can see how it looks. It might produce some uh, problematic uh, geometry in the end, but I think it's safer to go with one at the moment. 
and then do a, a little test. Oh, the other thing that we can definitely do with this workflow is that uh, since FEM simulations don't multi-thread very well, we can run a few versions of this fairly easily and while waging the um, sub steps. So let's make that happen, which means we need to copy one of our uh, top networks, I guess, just to do the waging part, right? So I'm gonna copy this and I'm going to go in the solid sim right here. Let's call this maybe bring it all here solid sim okay um, bake solid sims so I'm gonna go inside so what do I want to uh, wage is these values so I want to wage this from 1 to 4 okay and then I'm gonna go in here um, I'm gonna pin this Go back inside my dot .NET, drag my attribute to here, absolute, remove, I just need the path, remove the settings, and then attribute name, we can keep it like a uh, sub step. So if I copy this, and then I need to write here, dollar, uh, add sign sub step. I want more collision passes like 10 by default. Uh, and then I want to pretty much sub step, use sub step from one to four. And um, I think that's pretty much it. And then I want four wages. That's gonna be one, two, three, four. Uh, that's correct. And then if I go back in here, um, follow down so this guy here right i want a simulation so all frames in one batch that's fine local scheduler i think i can just turn this off that's fine um here though i need to change my path to solid sim and then here maybe because this is a solid sim so I'm gonna go fem wedges and instead of pyro because that's the type of the simulation, I'm gonna type FEM bus in case I create another one. Bus crash, okay? And I think now I can save it again and then start simulating my wedges. And that should do the trick. Let's double check again. Oh, we need the frame range. Obviously that needs to be correct, which is 282 is our beginning frame and we want to simulate until 300 let's say to see what it does and uh, based on the results maybe we can kick off a high resolution overnight simulation um, so let's save again and I'm gonna launch this now cook selected notes and I'll get back to you once it's over